It's here, my new collection of poems, Crooked Smiling Light from Plan B Press. A lot of the poems in this collection I started before my second full-length collection of poems, Point Blank, was published in 2016. So just think about it. From before 2016 to now, you know, this was a long time in the making. And it's finally here, thanks to Plan B Press. When I was thinking of doing this video, I was wrestling with the idea of doing a reveal video or doing both a reveal video and a showcase. And if you follow me on social media or for Facebook friends, then you already saw the cover, so no reveal there. Um, but I thought I'd still do a showcase video because I didn't want to just push out a pose, say the book's out, maybe include a couple blurbs and some snippets from interviews and a sample poem and think that was enough for you to make the decision on buying this collection. So I wanted to give you more of a sampler. So um, that, hence the showcase video. And no, I'm not going to be reading from this collection. I want the experience to be a visual one for you. So I have videos inspired by some of the poems in this collection. And so I'm gonna intro a poem, cut to the video for that poem, then come back, talk a little bit more about the collection, intro the next poem, and cut to that video, and you get the gist of how this is gonna go. And then later on in the video, I'll talk about Plan B Press. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So first up is the poem, The Light Inside. And I wrote that poem in 2015. This was just before our first daughter, Jasmine, was born. You know, prior to Jazz's birth, you know, we had some health issues. The health issues were tied to uh, my, my wife having lupus. And, you know, we were uh, discouraged from having children. But despite all of that, you know, our miracle baby number one, Jasmine, came knocking. Basically, she kicked the door in, you know, so eager to enter our lives. So here's a poem for Jasmine, The Light Inside. You were a print of light, pressed into a waxy dark sheet. Your mom framed you while I carried you in my wallet and phone. I stood in your white room, the black window trim and floorboards, the espresso dresser and crib, watched me fold your onesies, watched me contemplate the country of fatherhood, where experience alone won't grant you citizenship. I hang the fluffy pink sleep sack, the doll-like plaid dress, the white coverall and cap freckled with green and blue cockatoos. Everything hangs, waiting for you to fill them, the way your mom and I waited for you to fill her womb. We waited through the tears, pacing and praying you'd be stronger than the ones before, barely a glimmer when they dim. Now your mom's a lamp whose light comes from your kicks and punches, from watching the star in your chest flash on the ultrasound, from your persistence to enter our life. If there's one thing waiting taught us, it's that patience is the currency of anything worth having. So I rub your mom's tummy to feel your elbow, then your fist, grateful for the light inside. Okay, so that was the light inside and it's included in my new volume of poems, Crooked Smiling Light from Plan B Press. So next up is The Island of Smiles. And that poem is about my wife and I when we were dating. You know, prior to me meeting my wife, I had you know, some relationships that look promising and then they never developed into anything. And so how I met my wife was unexpected. It actually was 
uh, our friends trying to hook us up, but they didn't tell us it was a hookup. You know, they got us together and we just clicked. And this poem is about one of those moments uh, when, when, you know, when things were just right. You know, we felt, you know, our energies were in sync. And, you know, I mean, the poem is self-explanatory, so I'll just cut to that video. So here is the Island of Smiles. The Island of Smiles. Candlelight fingering our misty limbs and you nibbling a happy earlobe makes our living room a glad sanctuary of plush red cushions. The raspberry scented hookah haze almost makes the air edible. Your spicy tongue blows the hours back to a strolling through Adam's Morgan and your sly smile when you said, the birthday girl gets what she wants. That was after fried plantains and beef pepper stew, a goosey with fish and white rice. It was after us head bobbing to bass guitars, throbbing reggae inside Bukum. To think this life once seemed a world beyond me, an island of floating cabins, singing toucans, and water so green and emeralds in daylight. That happiness once seemed so cosmic. I was a sad astronomer watching the sky and cursing the improbable distance. Till a friend's invitation got us together that night, shuffled in the years, stacked behind us. If every moment we live is now part of us, tonight we're a rainy evening and a cramped African restaurant. We're the storm glazed streets outside Bazaar Atlas. You haggling a Moroccan merchant's price on hand sewn leather sandals and sweet shisha tobacco. We're the ride home before the sandalwoods burnt offering, before the tiger's eye shimmer on your thighs from a small flame's broken light. Okay, so that was the Island of Smiles and it's again included in my new collection, Crooked Smiling Light from Plan B Press. Uh, next poem up is Gluttony. And so with this poem, you know, if you're familiar with the fable about the dog and the bone and the dog sees its reflection, sees the reflection of the bone, but thinks that it's a bigger bone instead of its own reflection and loses the bone that it actually has, trying to get that. This next poem, it's kind of like my take on the moral of that story. Uh, so this is gluttony and real quick I mean some people who have heard me read this poem or who, who saw this video before are surprised that this is one of my wife's favorite poems but you know she was very encouraging you know through the process you know when I was writing it I was actually discussing the process with her and I think this is one this is probably one of the few poems when my wife was actually involved in the creative process of this poem. And I say involved because there were a lot of things I had to think through and talk out and to kind of clear my head to write this poem. So this is gluttony. Gluttony. Combing the bargain bin, a woman who's not your wife, 
brushes beside you asking if the Roy Hargrove CD you're holding is any good. She's close enough for you to smell her ginger patchouli body wash, the angle she gives you in her leather bomber jacket, the one unzipped showing a white tee retracing her athletic stomach and arms. The jacket with its collar flared makes her a bright blossom booming its honeydew scented tune along her neckline. And your father's voice from two decades before warns you about gorging on everything you see. You were 16 the first time he told you when your hunger hovered like that summer at Myrtle Beach. Sister strutting the boardwalk beneath a honey barbecue sun whose sweet light made each of them a long stretch of marinade, a chromatic scale of flavors along which your tongue was burning to play. And isn't temptation always lurking, eager to hold our common sense hostage? You tell the flower woman you're married after she points to a flyer for a Roots show and says y'all should go. When she asks, are you happy? You remember a brother once asking how you could love one woman when the world's a buffet, the possibilities of pleasure laid out like jumbo crab cakes, lasagna rolls, and buffalo wings. What's gluttony if not a symptom of our own hunger consuming us? Wasn't Jack as careless selling his sustenance for a handful of beans? You remember the story of the stalk that almost made him a hungry giant's grub. You still hear the pastor preaching about gluttons wearing the rags of drowsiness, which is how your wife found you stumbling through the days. Your life before her was a stringless violin, a dark garden of wilted sunflowers, a camper trailer rusting against a moldy brick wall. You were once a city of power lines, boarded up clock towers, junked cars, and blazing drum barrel fires. What she saw in you, only her heart knows. Just like it knew you'd leave the temptress back at the listening booth, watching the automatic doors close behind you. At 16, you thought all there was to living was filling your appetite. Too young to know love is the everyday meal, that the lack of it kills quicker than the absence of food. Okay, so that was Gluttony. And Gluttony is in my new collection of poems, Crooked Smiling Light from Plan B Press. So let me tell you a little about the press. Plan B Press is an independent publishing company that produces high quality limited run poetry chapbooks. Their primary focus is to publish authors at the beginning of their careers, first through third books, and to create books that are visually appealing combining imagery and words and packaging the collections as a completed thought. I don't know if you could tell, but I'm definitely happy with what they did with Crooked Smiling Light. Plan B Press also emphasizes the plastic nature of poetry by encouraging collaboration with artists from other mediums beyond traditional form. Learn more about them at planbpress.com. And so these next two videos, and I have to introduce them together because they cover a part of our lives, my wife and I, where we were going through a challenging time, but we came out fortunately into light. So these two poems capture a moment when my wife and I got the news that my wife needed a kidney transplant. You know, the lupus that she was diagnosed with shortly after we were engaged in 2011, you know, lupus had killed her kidney function. 
And so she was on dialysis until she was able to get a new kidney. So the poem Beacon, the video for the poem Be Beacon, pretty much covers, you know, what's happening leading up to our surgery. And then Into the Light captures, you know, the moment after, the sur after our surgery. And both forms are self-explanatory, but I always have to read them together. And because of that, I'm running these two videos together. So the next video is Beacon. And then that video will be followed by the video for the poem, Into the Light. Beacon. An intern asked, aren't you scared? And you remember the hospital clerk saying, what you're doing is courageous. You do what you have to for your wife whose life is leashed to a box, cleaning her blood before spooling it back into her body it does what it has to because her kidneys can't. And weren't they courageous standing their ground before lupus took them out? Its gluttony left you scratching your head, lost in this new life. The one that marks you donor and your wife recipient. The one where the transplant center is another turf to navigate. This life, where words like renal failure and nephrectomy, seizing your new tongue. You watch your wife sleep, while the machine chimes and beeps, remembering the intern's question. Of course, there were moments that gobbled your bravery to a morsel. The emergency room visits, Lupus nearly taking her out. And isn't she the courageous one? How she welcomes each day, even those where grief is the overcast sky. Those moments when the only light is a heroic heart blazing these dark streets, winding beyond the mysterious and unknown. Into the Light. You're a floor below me, healing in your room. Both of us soar from the divine puppetry of science, God pulling the surgeon strings, sliding the kidney from inside me, routing it to its new body in Connecticut. And wasn't he present in the hand's deaf dance? And how hope lights the operating room like a stage. Your new kidney ready for its debut inside you. Having traveled in a freight of prayers. 17 hours from Minneapolis to DC. Didn't our road here seem even longer, not being a direct match, the hiccup in lab results, 
us hurling our names into an exchange pool deep with uncertainty. And here we are in our beds, an elevator ride from each other. This moment, like the 90 degree day beyond our windows, the cloudless sky. Shadows receding in the sunlight. Okay, so that was Beacon and Into the Light. And those poems are in my new collection, Crooked Smiling Light from Plan B Press. So, lastly, is The Land of Innocence. And with this poem, I... You know, my daughter was born when George Floyd was killed and, and, the, and the protests that ensued. And so I, I usually am not good. I'm not one of those poets that can write immediately when something happens. But this was definitely a rare occasion when that happened. You know, and I guess maybe I was struck with, you know, the fact that as a life, was starting, another life ended. And so, this is the land of innocence, dedicated to my now 15-month-old daughter, Jade Rose. And it's also dedicated to George Floyd. clip shows a protest ignited after police killed George Floyd. Torched SUVs, overturned cop cars, armored officers retreating. All of that sinks my wife into a deeper postpartum, having made it through our personal crisis. We watch the python of despair coil itself around America, blowing out glass storefronts and colliding angry bodies as the tension constricts and crushes. We're miles from the mayhem, but a different kind of danger finds us in the maternity ward. A decreasing heartbeat Frenzied nurses rushing my wife to the OR. Surgeons scrambling to save our daughter. Watching the news, I'm reminded of slogans on chaos as necessity. Real discoveries come from chaos. Chaos is beautiful and full of fertility, etc. But when it's a violent pattern of reactions, What's the real discovery? Where's the beauty in things shattered and tagged? If the same pattern of injustice ripples our lives, maybe chaos isn't the right word. Let's try instead challenge. And since it means refuting the truth or validity of, isn't a protest a public dispute of someone else's truth. Like the one about the fear of dark bodies, how it justifies us being mangled or discredited in news cycles. Wouldn't the beauty then be new laws that get us closer to becoming the people the Constitution claims it protects? Let me begin again. When my wife told me several months ago she was pregnant, we knew the challenge of this birth could take her life, just as the challenge in the hospital threatened our daughters. And isn't it an act of faith to go blindfolded into the future and be delighted by the light there? Now we're lit by a dancing star named Jade, short for Jadishala.
which in Yoruba means come into wealth. She's jade, like the green stone, said to emit wisdom and clarity. I'm feeding her while watching the YouTube video. Someone on screen yells, we're better than this. And she squeals, mouth dripping with her mother's milk, smiling while dreaming her baby dreams. That land of innocence, where it all starts before we lose our way back, rationalizing our destruction. Okay, so that was the land of innocence. And it's in my new collection of poems, Crooked Smiling Light, from Plan B Press. Support the press by purchasing my new collection of poems, Crooked Smiling Light. And then also purchase some other chat books there too. I'm sure they would appreciate that. Whatever platform you're watching this video on, please follow me, subscribe, see more videos like this. And I'm out. Peace.